Welcome to video lecture number two for anatomy basics. In this video, we are going to cover the basics of the brain, different parts of the brain, their function, and the location of each. And this video is going to be pretty short. The brain um, is the control center for the body. Obviously, it's going to control which muscles are contracting, which ones are relaxing. It's going to control our digestive system. It's going to basically control our entire body, right? So it's super duper important. The average brain weighs about three pounds. Um, that is an actual picture of someone holding a human brain. That's about the size of it. And a regular average human brain consists of about 100 billion neurons. This is where you store all of your memories, all of your um, intelligence. This is where your body um, is able to tell you if you're hungry or thirsty. And all of that information is stored in these 100 billion neurons. Now for this video, since we are talking about the parts of the brain, you will need to use this diagram that is on Google Classroom. Um, you don't have to, but it's going to be a really great resource to label the different parts that we talk about and take some notes on. So please make sure that you have this open and ready to go. Please make sure that you did open it, go to file, make a copy so that it is editable. The first part of the brain that we are going to talk about is your cerebral cortex. When you visualize a brain, usually you think of this really highly folded pink spongy stuff. That pink spongy stuff is your cerebral cortex. So it's the very outside of the brain. It's the largest portion. It kind of looks just like the diagram. Um, and the cerebral cortex actually has four different lobes to it. It's not physically divided into the four lobes, but tomorrow's video is going to talk about each of those four. Um, so there are different parts of the cerebral cortex that have different responsibilities. They are going to um, kind of focus on different things that your brain is trying to process. Um, and so the overall function of your cerebral cortex, although there are a ton of functions, um, the two that I would like you to know is that um, this is where your intelligence is held. This is the part of your brain where everything you learn, like this new stuff today, is going to be housed in your cerebral cortex. It's also um, in charge of interpreting sensory information. So for instance, um, when I have my hand on a hot stove, my sensory neurons are going to send the information of the of whatever I'm touching up to my brain and the cerebral cortex is going to kind of process that information to tell me, oh, that's hot. And then it would obviously send signals down my motor neurons to move my hand away. The cerebral cortex is actually divided into two hemispheres. So it is physically divided into those two. Um, we call them the right brain and the left brain. So it's super scientific. Um, there are, there used to be all these quizzes out on the internet um, that you could take to find out if you are more right-brained or left-brained. Um, if you're more right-brained, you are more artsy and creative and um, kind of have an imagination. And if you're more left brain, then you're really good at like analytical stuff like math and science. Um, I don't know if this is true. I don't, I haven't looked too deep into the research, but um, it is actually physically divided into the right and left hemisphere. So if you get bored while you are at home, um, why don't you look on the internet, see if you can find a right brain or left brain quiz and see where you fall. The next part of the brain we are going to talk about today is called the corpus callosum. Um, this is a band of axons that connects the two hemispheres of the cerebral cortex. So um, if you're having trouble labeling your brain diagram, 
um, please use my diagrams. I use the same exact arrows that should be on your diagram. The function of the corpus callosum, besides connecting the hemispheres, is allowing for communication between the hemispheres. So it's kind of like a bridge, right? If there's something in the right hemisphere that needs to get over to the left, it would go through the corpus callosum. The third part of the brain is the cerebellum. Um, it is a highly, highly folded portion kind of underneath the cerebral cortex. Its function is to coordinate muscle action. So every time that you are moving a muscle, it is coming from your cerebellum. So as you are typing notes or writing them, or even if you are just um, stretching in your chair, right, your cerebellum is the one who's telling your muscles to contract and relax. It also controls your body posture. Obviously, it takes flexed muscles to keep your body upright um, and its position, and it is very highly folded. So you should see that in your picture as well. The fourth part of the brain is the thalamus. Um, it, it, its job is kind of like a receptionist, right? When you walk into the school, you go to Miss Bamlet and you tell her, I need to go visit Miss Key, and she tells you where to go, right? If you don't know where to go. The thalamus is kind of like Miss Bamlet in the brain, right? It's going to take incoming sensory signals, like what would come from um, the neurons in my hand on the hot stove, and it would come to the thalamus. The thalamus is going to recognize what what the neurons are trying to tell it about the temperature of what I'm touching, and they would send it to the part of the brain that's going to tell my hand to get off of it. Okay, so the thalamus is kind of like the receptionist. The last part of the brain for this video is um, the hypothalamus. So um, this part of the brain is required to help your body maintain homeostasis. And if you don't remember what homeostasis means, it is maintaining a stable internal environment. So the hypothalamus is what regulates your body temperature. If you were to have a fever, your hypothalamus is going to cause your body to sweat to bring your body temperature back down. Likewise, if your body temperature is too low because you're cold, your hypothalamus is going to get your body to start shivering. It also is going to kind of regulate your hunger. So when your stomach is empty, your hypothalamus knows um, and if your body's kind of running low on energy, it's going to stimulate that kind of um, that instinct to go eat, that feeling of hunger. And then also the same with thirst. When your body is low on water, below water level, it's going to kind of stimulate you um, to go and get a glass of water. This is what your um, brain diagram should look like when um, at this point in time. So again, we talked about the cerebral cortex that is um, in charge of your intelligence and interpreting sensory information. The corpus callosum, that is the part that um, connects, connects the two hemispheres of the cerebral cortex, and it allows for communication between those two hemispheres. We talked about the cerebellum, which is in charge of coordinating your muscle action, controlling your body posture, so on and so forth. The thalamus, which is like a receptionist, it takes incoming sensory information and sends it to the region of your brain that it needs to go to for processing. And the hypothalamus is in charge of homeostasis. Hypothalamus, homeostasis. So it regulates your body temperature, um, your hunger, your thirst, all of that. So make sure that your diagram looks like this. And that's it for video two.